Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Etsy needs stores to fail. Now, this is one of the most discussed areas about Etsy from Etsy sellers in the forums, places like Reddit. You will see people say, why does Etsy do these stupid things on their platform? Why does Etsy cause me as a seller so many problems just to try and sell my products? Why are they always messing with the site? You will always see people asking these questions and then you will see other people saying, well, Etsy doesn't want your business to fail. That's ridiculous. Why would Etsy harm itself by having your business fail? Hopefully you've seen these, these conversations happen uh, in various places around the internet. And this, is, this video has been, in, been a while in the making. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. And I've had to really, really formulate my thoughts and get this together. So three years ago, around three years ago, Rachel Glazer, the Etsy CFO, came out and said, referred to something as seller churn. So seller churn is the process of stores failing, new stores coming onto the platform. And when she said those words, seller churn, it was so impersonal. It was so devoid of feeling. People were shocked. People were genuinely shocked about the two words that she used because it showed a complete lack of care or empathy for sellers. There was a huge uproar about it when she when she came out and said these words and it shocked me too when she said them but even back then three years ago i realized there was a very very good reason why she chose those two words seller churn and from there over time i've started to work out that etsy needs stores to fail I don't necessarily mean your store, and I don't mean all stores. I mean Etsy needs an undisclosed percentage of stores to fail. So let me take you into a couple of things that Etsy has done on the platform. One very, very recently, and one two or three years ago. And I want to use these as little examples as to how not meaning to, but how Etsy is getting stores to fail. So let's get into these two pieces. So the first of two incidences that happened on Etsy that I want to talk to you about was Star Seller. So as you know, Star Seller is Etsy's tracking program to show customers around the world how good you are at, at, in managing your store and the quality of goods you produce. But when Star Seller came out, and I think this was in August 2021, something like that, I was inundated with clients that had dying stores after Star Seller was introduced. And Etsy has a history, as some of you will know, of introducing great ideas that are actually really bad and, and tank stores and destroy stores and close stores. So after Star Seller was introduced, not everybody, but I certainly dealt with many clients that had stores that were dying after Star Seller. Star Seller somehow in the algorithm caused problems for these stores. And I dealt with enough people to know that this just wasn't some random thing. And also in the Etsy forums, there were many posts about Star Seller causing problems and businesses, uh, shops were, were lost because of this. Star Seller was the first one. The second one that caused huge problems was Etsy's free shipping guarantee. So Etsy said, this was way back in 2019, if you um, offer the free shipping guarantee, we'll give you priority placement in Etsy search results. But the problem that Etsy didn't realize was that pushing items with free shipping onto page one and two of search meant that the items that customers were actually looking for could not be found and the customers couldn't buy what they want and this cost Etsy millions in lost revenue and businesses were lost because of this situation with free free shipping guarantee. Rachel Glazer 
did allude to this in, in I think it's the Q2 report of 2020. She said she used the words significant headwind when she was referring to the free shipping guarantee. That's code for this was a really, really bad idea um, and we're going to make it go away. And they did make it go away. It doesn't exist anymore, although Etsy still tell you about the free shipping guarantee, which I think is completely wrong and it's unfair because it confuses people. So those two examples are two things that happened, one, very, uh, one uh, fairly recently and one um, a little bit further back. And just for context, really recently, what has Etsy gone and done? They've done the 5-4... Um, portrait um, photo change to Square. Now Etsy's not intending to damage businesses in what they do, but they change things all the time. They famously came out and said that people are making 50 changes or up to 100 changes a day on the live site, which is incredible. People, it blew people's minds. Uh, you know, there was no there was no structure there was no one sort of policing or identifying what these changes were testing them in a testing environment no etsy would would allow people to make these changes so there's this history of of lack of control lack of depth of testing and recently etsy changed the picture size now i've dealt with three clients this week and last week already their businesses have been destroyed by the picture change so they've gone from 10 orders a day 12 orders a day down to 0 to 1 which is incredible, and it's just because of the change of the picture. It's messed up the orientation, it's cut off key information in the, in the images, customers aren't clicking on them. This is, a, this is a big, big problem. So Etsy has a history of inadvertently, not saying, I'm not saying they're doing it on purpose, but ensuring that stores get into difficulty, get into, get into problem situations. Let's go a step deeper with this now and understand why they're doing it and the mechanism that they use to do it. Let's get into this. So why does Etsy need stores to fail? This is the situation. Etsy has almost 100 million products on the platform. It has 5.4 million sellers. It has almost 100 million customers and it needs to try to get the right products in front of the right customers at the right time to make sure they buy. The problem is Etsy is flooded with stores that are not working, that are not selling, that are not doing what Etsy needs them to do, which is bring in strong, consistent revenue. Etsy's full of it. You can look anytime, just type in print on demand t-shirt, go and have a look for a few pages and start to look at the amount of stores on the platform just in that niche that have no sales or very low sales. They're not functioning as Etsy needs them to function. So what Etsy does, it uses quality score. So quality score, as some of you will know, I talk about this a lot, is Etsy's mechanism to push, surface, promote and show products that it thinks people are going to buy. This is the differentiator. This is what Etsy uses to separate the wheat from the chaff, the good from the bad. But even with using quality score, it's still problematic because there are so many pro products on the platform and Etsy's discovery methods, search and suggestion and recommendation are sporadic in their ability to actually bring the products to the customer that the customer wants to buy. So quality score is what they use, but it's not a perfect system. So let's see now, finally, how Etsy perceives your business. And once you see this, you'll understand it much better from Etsy's perspective. Let's see what's going on from Etsy's side with your business. So remember those words that Rachel Glazer used? Seller, churn, devoid of emotion, empathy, feeling, no connection to sellers. Let's look at this from Etsy's perspective and it all becomes very clear why Etsy needs stores to fail. Don't think of your business in an emotional way for a moment. Don't think of it as your business. Think of your business as a quality score vehicle. It is a container that Etsy wants to fill with quality score. Okay? It's just it's like a box that Etsy fills with quality score. If it can fill it with quality score, you are good for Etsy. So Etsy likes you. So there is a conveyor belt of boxes 
stores coming onto the platform and every single day. It could be 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. Nobody knows, Etsy doesn't tell us the accurate figures for this, but just think, Every day, thousands and thousands of new vehicles are being put into the Etsy system. They've got no fuel. Quality of score is the fuel they've got none. They've got to create the fuel. They've got to sell to bring in the fuel that Etsy needs. On the other side, Etsy's also got stores that are dying and leaving the platform. So these are stores that have not worked. They failed, they've not sold, or they could have been suspended or closed by Etsy. It doesn't matter what the reason is for the stores exiting the platform. Here's the thing that matters, and Etsy knows this, more stores are coming onto the platform than are leaving the platform. So it's a constant churn, as Etsy said, a constant cycle of stores coming on, stores leaving. And when the store comes in, you have to collect quality score in your box to be viable on Etsy and, and, and succeed on the platform. So Etsy gets rid of all the boxes that aren't working and, and keeps the boxes that are working. But that, of course, is down to quality score and how the system works. And Etsy's quality score system is far from perfect. It is a flawed system. There are so many products on the platform. Etsy's search and discovery misfires. Sometimes it works well. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's awful. So. This seller churn is necessary to keep bringing in the new blood, bring in the fresh products. It doesn't matter, Etsy doesn't care. It doesn't care about the stores that fail. It just doesn't care. That's what seller churn is. It's removing the stores that don't work, bring the new stores on that might work. So once you see it from Etsy's perspective, it's necessary. It's just like a high street. You can't have businesses on a high street that don't work. They're just gonna fold, they're gonna close, and they're gonna have boards up on the windows. Etsy doesn't want that. So it's the same thing on its platform. It must have stores to fail, bring new stores in to give customers a chance to see some new products that, that they might want to buy. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments. I know I'm the first to say this. No one's ever said this on YouTube before. I've been mulling this over for ages. Give me your thoughts on this. What do you think about Etsy needing stores to fail? Not wanting, needing, it's necessary. It's not malicious, it's necessary. If you've got any questions, put them in my comments. And as always, if you want to work with me, the links are in the description to book a call. No excuse not to work with me. I've got calls from $25 for five minutes, and I look forward to working with you and answering your comments on this video. Cheers.